All right, man. Uh, normally, you start these things like something like witty or funny, kind of get the show going. I got nothing today. I got absolutely nothing. The what defense was hilarious. There you go. All right, everybody, what's going on? Welcome to the Locked On Avalanche podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I am your host, Chris Maselli, and with me now and forever is Mr. Shaggy Von Doom, Kyle Sullivan. Uh, oh, let me get this one out of the way. We don't need that guy. All right. Um, all right. So today's show is brought to you by Stat Hero. And Stat Hero is the first of its kind daily fantasy sports platform where it's you versus the house and head-to-head fantasy matchup, winner take all. Sign up is free right now at stathero.com slash hockey. Use the promo code hockey for a 100% deposit match. First things first, before we get into this debacle that was the Toronto Maple Leafs versus the Colorado Avalanche, uh, follow the show on social media outlets, LOPN underscore Avalanche tw- on Twitter, Locked on Avalanche on Instagram. Questions, comments, concerns, opinions, locked on avalanche at gmail.com and follow the show on the show's YouTube channel. Uh, all right, man. So, uh, you know, this is like your, your first like official day. If you want to run for the hills already, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, would, I wouldn't fault you um, after that performance. So does this, I, does this fall under evaluation period? Like I could just be like, yeah, you, you, ha- yeah. <laughs> you, you have a 30, 30 day grace period where, you know, this is a, uh, uh, we're an at will employer, you know, you can leave at any time, feel free. Uh, no, but like this, I, I haven't been this annoyed at watching an avalanche game and and frankly pissed off at watching an avalanche game as I was at that one. I can take a loss. I have, you know, you're going in an 82 game season, you're going to lose games. I got no problem with losses if the losses are you know, you you can take some good out of them. Um I don't know where to start with this because I guess I guess I can start with this. This was a, a a highly sought after game, I think, by by a lot of people, mm-hmm. by Avalanche fans, by Maple Leafs fans, by hockey fans in general. They were looking forward to this game because these are two teams that are expected to do things. Forget about the, you know, all of the first round and second round. That That's just that is what it is. But, you know, superstition don't exist. You know, it, it's just yeah. that's part of it's part of the dynamic with these two teams. I get that. But in the grand scheme of it, they are expected to go relatively far. And after watching this, people are like, uh, well, well, one of those teams proved what they can do. And the other one proved absolutely nothing. Um, I don't know. Like th- this, this is, it's not a good look for the abs. I know it's just one game, but it's a game you should have been up for. Yeah. And you laid an absolute egg. Uh, I, I, I'm seething right now, honestly. Yeah. Yesterday we were talking about, Nathan McKinnon could score four on accident. <laughs> like, right. uh, it was one of those games that y- you look at it, Marner, Matthews versus McKinnon and Rant, and like it was like Jack Campbell versus we, what we thought was going to be Kemper. It was going to be, it was good on paper. And the Maple Leafs came out and used this as a measuring stick game. Like, they are hot right now. They are yeah. really hot. And this was their game to prove themselves, like, we beat the uh, what's going to be the Stanley Cup favorite going into the playoff. Like we beat that team commandingly, and the Avalanche. There was not one good aspect of the Avalanche, top to bottom. Nothing looked good. The only positive of the night, we walked away without an injury. That's it. That we know of. I'm waiting sure. to wake up tomorrow morning and be like, oh, so and so is out. Well, we made it through the game without an injury, but there was one right before the game. And and you you mentioned it, and it's Darcy Kemper was out, uh, what a half hour, forty five minutes before a puck drop. So we clearly have no idea what happened. Um, it must have been either in morning skate or or warm ups or something happened somewhere late, where he's out. So short notice, Jonas Johansson goes in, um, and then they they had an emergency backup on the ready. 
while they were flying Eustace Anunin in, which he got there, I think right around halfway point of the yeah. game. But you're not going to put him in because you're playing the next day in Montreal. So, you know, Johansson had to go through the, you know, walk the plank basically last night. And and he looked he looked bad. He looked really, really bad. Um, I'll get to his stats, his like deeper stats in a minute. And and w- <laughs> people might turn off the episode after <laughs> I, I read I read some to you because they're horrid. They are horrid. Um, but my question, like my question is, is, is it starts, there's so many questions I have and they all start with why, like, why did Toronto come out that way? And we can't, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, like, why did they show up and, and, and they, and they do everything that they want to do and the avalanche can't, why is that? Why is that a thing? And why is it? We, we pick up our play in the second period. Like they, they, they pulled it within three to two. They gave up three first period goals. They netted one with 0.3 seconds left. Thank God for that, because now you have something to go on coming into the second. And they did play off of that for a little bit. And they pulled within three to two. So, but immediately Toronto gets a goal on a, a there was nothing in the way between Johansson and that shot. And he let it get by him. And when that happened, even though it was four to two, you're like, I, I don't see this happening because they just don't have it tonight. They are going to have to work their tails off. And, oh, yeah, you are playing a good team. That's not going to let you do what you want to do. But And that's my question is why why can Toronto go out there and, and just go anywhere they want to go on the ice? They just seem to be getting all of the puck luck and everything's bouncing to them. And why do the Avalanche have to fight for absolutely everything right now when they have as much talent as, as Toronto does? Yeah, there was – Every aspect of the avalanche was messed up tonight. There were bad passes, bad defense. Like this is a like usually if the avalanche have a bad night, like the defense is playing weird. We're getting bad shots, and like Bowen Byram or Kale McCarr is like doing something great to help out the lack of scoring we get. Every aspect of the avalanche game tonight was just terrible. No good passes. The uh-uh. shots were terrible. Um, force feeding McKinnon to try and make him to do something. <laughs> Nas didn't show up till the third period. Like I was just scanning the game. Like, is he hurt? Is he out? He was there. Burakovsky, he's been invisible for a while now. Yeah. Um, like EJ, his decisions with the puck, everything was bad. And Jojo was just letting in just bad he goals. He was a all there. night long. And then Usually when there's one thing that goes wrong with the avalanche, everybody else can kind of pick up their game and compensate. Nothing like that happened tonight. And Toronto came in, like I said at the beginning, they came in trying to prove themselves and they had everything going exactly right. And it only made it feel better. You beat a Stanley Cup champion or the favorite to be the champion this year with Austin Matthews getting a hat trick. Right. Um, Yeah, they they were trying to force it to McKinnon to try to uh, maybe – get him involved. And we talked about this yesterday. They didn't have to do that. They completely got off their game. And I don't know how much of it was because Nathan McKinnon was back, but it seemed like it was a lot of it. Mm-hmm. And I don't like that. I don't like that going forward because you, you, you've you proven that you can win without the guy. Uh, now just incorporate him into how you were playing. Why yep. blow everything up? Um, and you went right back to the drop back pass on the power play over and over and over again. It's driving me crazy. Every single team knows it's coming. And yeah, it's one thing that, you know, it's coming and you know, the avalanche basically have the mindset of, you know, it's coming, try and stop it. Yeah. Teams are stopping it. Yep. Do something else. And, and they did, they, when they didn't have McKinnon, they would do the drop back pass, but have that other guy flanking him on, on the other side of him. And now you have two guys going up instead of one. That's just a little wrinkle, but it's different. They didn't do that once tonight. And that was a glaring uh, part of the avalanche tonight. Um, I think even the broadcast crew on altitude brought it up. There were so many good, juicy rebounds coming off Jack Campbell's pads, and nobody was there to clean it up. Right. There, were, there were two or three opportunities that they can net a goal, but there was nobody there to clean that up because of the offensive transition was so wonky that it was a breakout. Or you kind of get a dirty shot, you get it in there, it bounces off the pad, and everybody else is, I mean, positioning was god-awful tonight. And if we 
were at least just competent, a C plus on offense tonight. Yeah, this would have been a lot closer than it was. Like they just had no. I mean, and you got to give credit to Toronto. I don't want to make all this all seem like you know it's the Avalanche playing poorly, but they did. Um, and Toronto was on top of their game. They they made it very difficult for the Avs to find shooting lanes. Like they know Cal McCarr is very good at getting pucks through traffic, and he didn't. He couldn't do it. But that's okay. All right, then 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 change something up where you throw it a little bit off center. Um, and I'm sure they were trying to do that, but Toronto's good at shutting all of that down. And like you were saying, like rebounds, the they were there to be had for the Avs, but they just weren't on the spot to to clean up any of the dirty work. It, and on the other side, Toronto was doing that at will. Mm-hmm. And when you leave Austin Matthews wide open in front of the net, point blank range. Mm-hmm. 100 out of 100 times he is going to put that home why nobody was on him on that specific play i think it was his second goal he is just camping out in front of the net i i want to see an overhead shot of that because there's probably not an avalanche player in sight they got embarrassed they got embarrassed tonight on a night when you should not have gotten embarrassed because you needed to be up for this game and they completely were not no, and that was that was the that was the uh, breaking point for me was that goal that you just mentioned because he went from one side of the net to the other, set it up for a highlight real goal, and, and that, yeah, no, nobody there, nobody even bothered to get in his way. And, and at he, that he, point, I felt bad for JoJo because I'm like, they are leaving him out to dry. But sure, then, like that, good teams don't do that, and they don't let up eight goals, and at that was the point that I was like, this game is a absolute disaster. Dude, he got that puck in point blank range, fumbled around with it, not fumbled around with it, played with it. Like he knew exactly what he was doing for a few seconds. And there were still no avalanche defenders on him. Yeah. Uh, we were recording this, you know, minutes after the game is over. So I haven't seen the, any of the press conferences. I can't wait to watch them because I really want to see what the abs are, are, are saying about it. So, um, there, there's going to be a lot of questions going forward. We'll get to some of those in a minute, but uh, let's hear from who do we got today? I think we have, like I said, Stat Hero in uh, the opening segment, but we're going to talk about Stat Hero yet again. And no one plays daily fantasy sports to lose. Winning feels a heck of a lot better. And traditional fantasy sports are a long term losing proposition because you never know who or what you are up against. And Stat Hero is the first of its kind daily fantasy sports platform where it's you versus the house in a head to head fantasy matchup and it's winner take all. And the crazy part is Stat Hero shows you their lineup before you play and you handpick the team you want to face them one on one. This is never before. Uh, it's a never before seen innovation of a fantasy sports and fantasy sports betting hybrid as stat hero players clocking odds that are over four times better. Why is that? Because you don't have to compete against thousands of experts or unknowns, and stat hero puts you in control of your fate. So go to stathero.com/slash hockey, sign up for free, use the promo code hockey for a 100% deposit match. That is stathero.com slash hockey. Promo code is hockey, and you get a 100% deposit match. Terms and conditions do apply. All right. So, the, you know, I think the, there's going to be questions abound for the Avalanche right now because you've been playing well. Mm-hmm. The opponents that you've been playing have not been the best, but you've been, you know, they haven't been nail biters. You know, you're scoring five, six, seven goals on these teams. And I think because of that, people are like you know, the Avalanche are, are are taking care of the teams that they should take care of in convincing fashion. And now you you do this against Toronto. Uh, you know, I think you, you think the questions are going to be there that, OK, yeah, the Avs can can do this against the Kraken. Um, the Senators, even though the Senators gave you a good game, you still hung seven on them. Um, you know, you beat the sharks who are a little bit better, but you're not like, this is the, this was the first real test. Yeah. And you didn't just fail it. You dropped out of college with this one. Yeah. Do you think there's going to be some questions here for the abs or are people just going to chalk this up to, uh, the one game scenario? This was the first team I think all year that came out and just punched us in the mouth 
every aspect of the game. Yeah. Montreal is a it's I mean it's no mystery. They're a they're a clear step down from what Toronto is right now. Um just erase the fact that they were in the Stanley Cup last year. This is not the same team. Um no. depending on how the Avalanche come out um tomorrow night or tonight actually when yeah. uh when they when they come out if they come out with that that same confidence that we've been touting up to this point that they finally got their groove like we're talking like we don't need to brusque because there's this this cohesion and chemistry that they're finally getting now tonight about third midway through the third i was like that the brusque it doesn't sound like a bad idea <laughs> sackix on the phone right now <laughs> like if it it this is a game that you can get out there and you can play with it. You can get your chemistry back. You can uh, you can get your lines how you like it because there was many times that Nate was playing with O'Connor and like the lines are being played around with like you do that against Montreal. You couldn't mm -hmm. establish yourself and your game against Toronto. All right, now do that against Montreal. If if there's another showing like we had last night against Toronto tonight against Montreal. There are questions everywhere, and we got God. serious problems. I really hope that, you know, this is a massive lesson learned for the Avs, and they come out. And we said, I necessarily show, like, look for specifically McKinnon mm -hmm. um, in, in the second. You know, look, and they did. They started to play a little bit better. That that goal that Johansson gave up to make it four to two after you just pulled within three to two was so deflating. They could never recover from that, um, but you, the 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 effort there in the second was they were they were going. They had good some pretty good possessions a couple times. It was short lived. Uh, that is how you have to come out in the first. In the first period, they were just not wanting to make any mistakes, and it was like they were just trying to get their feet wet. Screw all that. Yeah. Go full bore from the beginning from now. Like you have to, like you set the tone. Mm -hmm. They let, they let Toronto set the tone of that game. And then what happened before you blink, they're down three to nothing. And this is what happened against Dallas. And they got down two to nothing. And now you're playing against a defensive team. And that's, and Toronto is a Toronto is, is good on both ends. Dallas is, is oh, not the best on the offensive end. They're a very good defensive team. Toronto's good on both sides. And now you've dug a three nothing hole. You were starting to climb out of it. It just wasn't your night. I get that, but man, like I'm tired of seeing this team come out not putting the pedal like pinned right off the get go. They got to start doing that. It's it, and and not waiting for the second period to really either play catch up if you're behind, or to finally like take control of the game. Take control of the game in the beginning, please. Yeah. I'm begging you. And. I think the biggest thing, what they need to do against Montreal is not get cute. Like, yeah, no, no. That's drop always backs. been an avalanche thing. Yeah. Yeah. The, the dropbacks, they creep back in like this, like the overpassing. Um, like it was very apparent in the first period, especially with Nate on the ice, there was overpassing. There were so many good shot lanes that like Byron was giving up and like O'Connor was giving up just to give like Nate that additional shot. And then yeah. he'd like he he's not feeling himself yet, so he'd like peel off that shot and then pass it again. So it, just dude, like if the, you have a shot, just I, take the shot. I, I go back to the first game of the season against Chicago. That's exactly what they did. Mm -hmm. If they just had an an inch of space, they were taking a shot and putting it on net. And what happened? They blew the game wide open, and and it was you know it was all abs. Yeah. And I was like, all right, maybe like this, this could be the trend for this season, mm -hmm. but no, like they do, they, they, you know, there's times they try to get too cute with the puck and, and they don't do that, but, um, I'm going to, I'm going to go over and I don't mean to, 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 you know, rail on the guy, but he had a bad game. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll pump him up when he plays good, which is, you know, understandable, but you need to talk about the bad as well. And Jonas Johansson was not good in this game. Um, his expected goals against were a three point. We'll round it up 3.7. Okay. So his goals saved above expected. If that's negative, you don't want it to be negative. And if it is negative, you want it to be minimal, like one point something at the most. 
So if you're negative, that means you're, you're giving up way more goals than your expected goals. His goal saved above expected is negative 4.31. You don't see that. That is horrible. Uh, and Kemp, Kemper's had some bad games where he was negative like 2.1. This is double that. This is giving up way more goals than you are expected to give up. And if you want to go even further, let me scroll down the stat sheet here. When you get into uh, his low and medium and high danger goals, he gave up two high danger goals, one medium danger goal, and five low danger goals. Low danger goals are go- are, are shots you should stop easily, and he gave up five of them. How many expected low danger goals should he have had? 1.24. So he should have only given up one and a quarter of a low danger uh, goal, and he gave up five. Bad game. Bad game all around, and it just gets worse from there if you you want to look at percentages and stuff like that. But there's not a lot, like you said, there's not a lot to hang your hat on from here. Let me see. I want to see shots on goal. Uh, McKinnon did have five shots on goal. So did Kadri. Gerard had three. I thought Sammy Gerard played a pretty good game. Aside right, yeah. aside from the the goal, you know, you want to look at the goal, but um, he did him. And having said that, him and Byram made a bad bad decision on defense that um, gave the Maple Leafs their second or third goal. Um, they were just kind of caught in no man's land and they couldn't recover. So even him, even Sam Gerard, who I, I thought played a relatively decent game, he still made a, a catastrophic catastrophic mistake that cost the abs. It's just, there's not much I, you can go on for this, man. I wonder how much of that, that Kemper last minute announcement that he's not good to go tonight. I wonder how much of that went into JoJo's preparedness for tonight. You know, like, because he never looked comfortable at any point in this game. I'll say this, though. Uh, there were two instances where Kemper's skate came off and he had to jump in and he looked okay. You know what I mean? Like that there, That there, is more of a – it's a rapid like, okay, I'm in here. Like, And you got in your mind, like, I'm not staying in here the whole night. At one point he did. Yeah, he did, yeah. But like you're in there, you're like, okay, this is a temporary thing. I could stop this. And usually, like things are, it's not like what we saw tonight. Yeah. But you could see how Kemper would set up for those saves, and especially like how he was skating around. Like his body language, I think, telegraphed to the defense that he was not in it tonight. He was yeah. not feeling it. it he is... wasn't seeing it. And like the defense was yeah. in his pocket all night long. Yeah, it is different when you're when you're tagged to come in in the middle of a game. You can assess. You've been there watching. You get the flow of the game. But to be say like, hey, you know, here's the keys. We need you tonight. It's different. Some guys get up for that moment. You know, you mm-hmm. see that a lot in, in baseball when pitchers are like, hey, you got to pitch tonight, and they're not prepared to do it. Um, you know, they, they throw no hitter. But yeah, it, it, this was not a you know, this was uh. Two two thirds of an inning and uh, it was over. <laughs> I, I think that yeah. would be the big thing to chalk up to JoJo is his lack of preparedness for tonight's game. I think is going to be a big indi- like the big reason for his production tonight. Yeah. All right. So where do we go from here? Uh, we'll talk about that. We are going to hear from Primal Origin Oils Beard Care. You can, if you you or someone that you care about has a beard which is uh, myself and Kyle, Uh, it needs to get primal. Maybe you are that guy who has never considered the benefits of treating your beard with product. Primal Origin Oils will stop the itch and make your beard look healthy and groomed. Their goal is to help others look good and live healthier lives through the use of natural oils. And their products are free from harmful synthetic ingredients and has a low impact on our planet. Primal Origin Oils makes balms, oils, and whipped butter, which I have, which is fantastic, uh, that are renowned as the best feel and beard products available. 
This is due to the exotic carrier blend oil uh, with oils like raspberry seed, rose ship, and chia seed oils. All products are fair trade certified and handcrafted in the USA. And the combo kits are a great holiday gift. And if you are shopping for yourself, you will be glad that you did. And we know that every company claims to have the best, but Primal Origin Oils challenges you to compare their ingredients and, fee and feel in, in the beard to the other comp companies that you have used. Uh, and we promise that you will see and feel the difference. Remember, the promo code is locked on. It will get you 20% off at Primal, Primal Origin Oils. It's kind of a tongue twister. <laughs> primaloriginoils.com. Once again, that promo code is locked on for 20% off at checkout. BetOnline.ag has you covered all season with more prop bets, odds, and lines than ever before. As football season continues to march towards the playoffs and BetOnline remains your number one spot for all the sports action this season. Head to our new updated desktop and mobile device websites to sign up today and receive a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use the promo code locked on to receive your bonus from basketball, football, the NHL, boxing, and UFC right to your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available on the 2021 seasons. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your favorite sports. It's where the game starts. Betonline.ag. There was one point in the game where Mark Mosier, after the, uh, Maple Leafs scored their eighth goal. Uh, he misspoke and he said the Maple Leafs lead the Avs eight to nothing. It was actually eight to two at that time. They did add one more to make it eight three. Um, it definitely felt like eight to nothing. Uh, maybe it felt like 16 to nothing. Like the Avs are just getting blown out of the arena. Um, but this is what you have to do as, as a hockey player. We're, set, we're sitting here. We're talking about it. We're letting off steam. Um, the best thing is that they are playing the next day mm -hmm. uh, for everybody, for them, for me, for you. And for, you know, you, you have to, you do, you, you do have to, how do, you, how do I say this? You, you, you have to remember this. Uh, you kind of have to forget it as quickly mm -hmm. as possible, but don't, don't ever, you know, don't completely forget it where it's like, that's not us. Yeah. Yes, that's not you. But remember that this can happen. Mm -hmm. You know, if you if you can take anything good out of this, it's that you got absolutely destroyed. And this should just invigorate you to make that never happen again. And on one hand, I, I hopefully, you know, if the abs can come out, we can say, like, I feel bad for Montreal because they took their wrath out on Montreal. The, the abs have to have that eye of the tiger mentality. Uh all the time and hopefully we can look back and say that crushing at the hands of the maple leaves is where they really started to say like all right we got to play our game all the time now and this is a really good learning experience for all the new avalanche players on the team as well because i mean realistically let's be let's be honest here the avalanche are a playoff team mm -hmm. so are the maple leaves and okay you got embarrassed by a playoff team treat this like a playoff scenario you got embarrassed you play them the next night this was our problem against vegas in last year's playoff we got embarrassed we never came back we stopped showing up yeah this is this is our learning experience okay you got embarrassed we can learn now how to overcome this and play montreal is not a playoff team but how do you overcome this this is where you learn yeah well, you look at, uh, I'm just looking at the, the Maple Leaf schedule um, back in, is this October? Yeah. I mean, it was the beginning of the season and, and they got off to a, a kind of a rough start to start the season, but they lost to the Penguins seven to one. So we're sitting here talking about, you know, the Maple Leafs and how, how good they looked, which they did. And they're one of the hottest teams in the league right now. And uh, come playoff time, they might be a favorite to, to go all the way. They got dismantled in a game and they followed that up with a four to one loss. So, you know what I mean? Like teams are going to have these games. Um, it, it's inevitable. Every single team is going to have a team where you just get blown out. You don't have it. How you recover from that is kind of what everybody will be looking at. But here's the thing. Like, I, I really think the abs, you know, their, their offense and their, their compete level is going to be, uh, at, you know, pinned in the red. But the interesting thing is, we don't know what's going on with Darcy Kemper. 
and all likelihood Houston uh, Eustace Anunen is going to be getting the start. Yeah. So, you know, that's a big who knows what. And all of this news about Kemper on the same day that we found out that Frankie is down with the Eagles for the long term mm. um, injury, like reassignment. He's right. going to be down there for a while. He's getting back to game shape. So this is it. Unless we make a move, it's it's Eustace Annan and JoJo until mm. Kemper comes back. And like for this to come out of nowhere, it's odd. It's alarming. Maybe it's nothing. Maybe we get him um, when we come back stateside for the last little bit of this road trip. But Montreal, it's either going to it's more more than likely going to be the new kid. So yeah. Do you trust him? Um, he's been he's been tearing it up, so that works in his favor. He has, he has. He was named best goalie of the month for the AHL. So, um, I guess if you're gonna have your first game, you know, you, you, you're not going up against Toronto. You're going up against Montreal. Montreal. Um, sometimes it's a tough place to place to play, but I don't think people are coming out to watch Montreal right now. So, um, and 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 you did say, you know, you mentioned this road trip. Again, not how you want to start a road trip. No, not at all. You got a five game road trip. So you, you're playing uh, Montreal and then you're in Ottawa and then you're in Philly and then you close it out against the Rangers. So, and you know, who Montreal, you're a better team than them. Ottawa, you're a better team than them, but they played very well against you the first time. Flyers are struggling and the Rangers have looked good. You should be able to come out of this. I mean, if you if you beat the teams you're supposed to beat, and you know, you, whatever you lost to Toronto, and then MSG is a tough place to play. If you finish this thing three and two, are you happy? Uh, yes, I would rather go. I would. You want them to redeem themselves because your bookends on this road trip they're are tough. about they're about the same caliber team. Yeah. If you can get it back going and then just use that momentum to go through the Rangers and walk out of this road trip four and one, everybody can oh, that's start. Huge. Yeah, that's huge. You can feel really good about this team going forward. And we're doing this with McKinnon. So we are firing on all cylinders. It doesn't matter who's behind in net. If we drop one of these in the middle, that's where concerns are valid. And yeah. we might need to start we might need to visit that debrusque deal we talked about mm. yesterday like if yeah. you drop one of these middle games of this road trip there are some problems and yeah i mean it, it, it it's a five game road trip so it's going to look you know you're, you're going to have a, a winning record or a losing record mm -hmm. um so barring well no you're yeah even if you're in overtime loss yeah, that, that, yeah. That, that's you know you get a point i guess but um you want to be three and two. You don't want to be two and three. It's just, obviously it's a better look, Yeah. Um, but we'll see. The Avs got to turn it around and quickly. I have all the confidence that they can do it. Um, it's not a good locker room right now. I can bet. So I'm, I'm anxious to go see some of those uh, press conferences, but we'll be back again tomorrow to, to discuss uh, how they turned it around if they did. And against the Montreal Canadians, and that'll be tomorrow. So, uh, that's it for today, everybody. Just uh, use it as a frustration day. It's going to happen. Might even happen once or twice again for the rest of the season. But this one, I was, the the anger level was rising while I was yeah. watching this one, and that hasn't happened in a while. So, um, all right, that's going to be it for today, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, definitely follow the show on Twitter, LLP and underscore Avalanche on Twitter. You can follow Kyle at Shaggy Von Doom. And if you're watching on uh, YouTube, you can see that Twitter handle right underneath that awesome backdrop that he's got over there. So, yeah. All right, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. It's always a pleasure, even though it was a blowout. It's still a pleasure. And uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace.